In February of 2008, the United States military launched Operation Burnt Frost to intercept and destroy USA-193, a malfunctioning top-secret American satellite owned by the National Reconnaissance Office. According to reports, the operation's objective was to prevent toxic debris coming from the satellite from falling on top of populated areas. But many countries such as China, Russia, and North Korea believe that behind the good intentions of President George W. Bush's administration, there was a hidden agenda to test the effectiveness of Navy ships equipped with the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System. Tensions quickly rose, and the United States, South Korea, and Japan prepared for imminent war. NRO Launch 21 during the Cold War era, the United States and the Soviet Union began launching satellites into space to monitor the planet and their former enemies as part of the space race. Then, during the early 21st century, Russia, China, North Korea, and the United States effectively developed several satellites for classified operations. On December 14, 2006, USA-193 was launched aboard the Delta II Space Launch System from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Also known as NRO Launch 21, USA-193 was a military reconnaissance satellite owned by the National Reconnaissance Office, or NRO, an intelligence agency from the Department of Defense. The spacecraft was part of the agency's Future Imagery Architecture, a Boeing program whose objective was to produce a fleet of cheap reconnaissance satellites. Upon entering orbit, USA-193 lost contact with ground teams, and after hours of waiting, the satellite was deemed inoperable. The specific purpose of the launch or the satellite's function remain classified to this day. Still, sources have claimed that USA-193 was a high-resolution radar satellite capable of producing high-quality images for the NRO. During the following months, NASA relentlessly tried to locate the lost satellite, but nothing was found. Representatives for NRO then contacted Nicholas L. Johnson, NASA's chief scientist for orbital debris. In a subsequent article about his involvement, Johnson wrote, quote, Theoretically, the spacecraft could have been struck in a vital location by another object. Therefore, the probability of a hit by a meteoroid or a piece of orbital debris needed to be examined. Based on Johnson's feedback, it was highly possible that the satellite was in low orbit and would, sooner or later, re-enter Earth. A Space Conundrum In December of 2007, NRO finally located USA-193, and Johnson's assessment became true. The organization's specialists quickly noted that the satellite had not expended any of its propellants. It actually carried a thousand pounds of hydrazine propellant in a titanium tank that could quickly melt at high temperatures. In his article, Johnson added, quote, The USA-193 situation was unprecedented. First, previous titanium tanks had begun the re-entry process empty or nearly empty of their propellants. The presence of a thousand pounds of hydrazine would affect the ballistic characteristics of the tank, which in turn might alter the fate of the tank. Of even greater importance, however, was a conclusion by spacecraft engineers that the hydrazine was very likely in a deeply frozen state. This complicated the re-entry survivability calculation immensely. The propellants posed an environmental risk if they made their way back to Earth. Still, the mission's classified nature limited the amount of personnel that could access data about the satellite's contents. This situation led the NRO to contact another specialist to study the possibilities of mitigating the risk of re-entering. General Kevin Chilton, commander of Strategic Command, then suggested that the agency contact the head of the Missile Defense Agency, General Henry Obering. Time was running out, and it was expected that the satellite would re-enter Earth in the following three months. By the end of the discussions, it was concluded that the best solution was to destroy the satellite in low orbit with an ASAT, or anti-satellite weapon system. The problem was that the United States lacked any of them. The country's last ASAT program dated back to the Cold War, Johnson himself had been part of it when, in 1979, he was invited to test a missile launched from an F-15 Eagle to take down low-orbiting satellites. A decision needed to be made, as the U.S. risked damaging innocent civilians or foreign infrastructure and losing the remains of the secret satellite if it fell under the hands of the Chinese, North Koreans, or Russians. In early 2008, President George W. Bush was finally briefed about the situation, and Operation Burnt Frost was born. Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense As pressure increased about the satellite's fate, tensions with North Korea and China were rising in the Pacific. North Korea became more aggressive with its threats of using its ICBMs, or ballistic missiles, against the allies of the United States in the region. 
to appropriately respond to the threat and protect its South Korean and Japanese allies, the United States deployed some of its Navy Aegis or BMD warships to counter the North Korean ballistic missiles. Although many American media outlets saw the deployment of these state-of-the-art vessels as a symbolic display of support for its allies, they weren't aware of the whole story. The Navy's BMD warships were the most viable option to take down the satellite, and soon the President authorized the military to proceed with the mission. The Aegis BMD, or Ballistic Missile Defense System ships, had short to medium ballistic missile defense capabilities. Once the Aegis BMD vessels were deployed, the military needed to figure out how the Aegis SM-3 missile would strike down the USA-193 satellite at the necessary altitude to eliminate the toxic threat. A lot was at stake. If the calculations were incorrect or the missile hit the satellite sooner, the space debris could reach the orbit of the International Space Station. And if it hit too late, the debris would fall down to Earth, the hydrazine would spread out, and the operation would be rendered useless. On February 14, 2008, the government publicly announced the plan to intercept and destroy USA-193. Tensions quickly rose, but the military command was convinced of the effectiveness of its Aegis BMD system and knew that if it was able to take down ballistic missiles, it could take down a spacecraft. After all, out of 15 attempts, the BMD system had been able to take down 13 missiles during testing. Hitting a Satellite On February 19th, three BMD-equipped warships, the USS Decatur, Russell, and Lake Erie, prepared for Operation Burnt Frost. However, the Russians, Chinese, and North Koreans readied for war as they witnessed a U.S. fleet gathering in the Pacific. At 1 p.m. the following day, the White House approved the launch, and minutes later, a single SM-3 missile was sent from USS Lake Erie to intercept the falling satellite. The missile then made contact and destroyed USA-193 at an altitude of more than 150 miles and surpassing a speed of 22,000 miles per hour. The hydrazine tanks exploded in a blinding flash. Days later, the Department of Defense announced that the satellite had been successfully destroyed and the environmental risk had been taken care of. Although the mission was a success, Russia and China extensively criticized the United States. Russia accused the Americans of opportunism, testing their missile defense system just before the draft of a new treaty that prohibited the use of space weapons. Meanwhile, China accused the United States of provoking a new arms race. The Chinese believed that the Americans launched the operation to counter China's anti-satellite test conducted in January of 2007. However, the official posture of the American government was and remains that the sole objective of Operation Burnt Frost was to eliminate the environmental threat that the satellite posed on Earth. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the possible outcome of the secret satellite if it fell under the control of the Chinese or North Koreans.